Now, hello everybody, I am Matt Williamson, and as you can imagine, we are going to recap day one of the fantastic NFL Combine. Uh, recording this Friday late, late afternoon. My apologies if I sound a little weary, I am. I just did six hours straight of radio and uh, pretty fried, but really into this Combine, of course. The D-backs are working out as we speak. I will certainly talk about them next week without question. But we need to recap the defensive linemen, linebackers. All the front seven guys uh, are done. They did all their stuff yesterday. So a couple big names didn't work out. Mazzy Smith, I thought he would and lighted up. I'm not sure why he didn't. Tyree Wilson, Miles Murphy, Jalen Carter. Those last three are all probably top 10 picks. You know, So some of those guys just don't feel they have to or they're going to do it in their environment. Jalen Carter is obviously a very different situation. Um, so a couple guys to talk about here. Let's just start at home. Kalijah Kansi from Pitt. I mean, 6'1", 281 pounds, undersized. Always going to get the Aaron Donald comparisons. Unfair. 4.6740, which is unbelievable. It's one of the best times ever for a 280-plus pound prospect in the 40. Really productive, you know, and that's really all he did here. But was what kind of went under no, under. You know, under the radar with him, with Cansey, who I'm rooting for. Don't get me wrong. He's a pit guy. Very short arms. So he worries me. I don't think he's for the Steelers in any way, shape, or form. I think he's a specialty type guy. Third down packages. I don't know that he's an every down player, but his 40 time is was the buzz of the combine there for a while. So Tuli Tulipopo, Tulipop, wow, killing that one. Uh, the USC defensive lineman. He was often considered a defensive tackle, but he came in at 266 pounds. I mean, so some of these D tackle shorter guy body types have decided you know, they're going to maybe trim down a little bit, maybe be, you know, a, a, just a D lineman, you know, maybe a tweener, however you want to call them. Um, but he really looked good with his speed, quickness, uh, his positional drills, I thought, were really impressive. So I think these guys kind of fancy themselves as, I'm an interior pass rusher. Just call me that. You know what I mean? So I think that's a pretty cool way of looking at things. Those guys never existed five, ten years ago. Along those lines is, oh, man, another brutal name. I apologize. I'm weary. I'm going to destroy it. But the defensive end from Northwestern, we're going to call him Double A because right now I just don't have it in me to to pronounce his name. So such is life. So Clancy sets the world on fire by you know running the great time at 280-plus pounds. Well, he comes in at 282 and crushes Clancy and runs a 4-4-9, a sub-4-5 at 282 pounds. Massive broad jump, massive vertical. Um, you look at his body and it was like double A, man. He is rocked up. It's muscles on top of muscles, big, thick shoulders. He has some inconsistent tape at Northwestern, but I mean, what he did here has to get him in the first round consideration at a, at a minimum, in my opinion, has to. I mean, he too is probably a interior pass rusher, but I think he's more of just a disruptor. You know, I mean, just line him up all over. And unlike Clancy, that's the difference between those two to me is he's done it from an edge position quite a bit. You know, that's you know, a high percent of his snaps were as a stand up, you know, on, on two feet, no, no hand in the dirt. And he's got two inch longer arms than Clancy. So he can fight with those six, six defensive tackles. I mean, and th I think his upside's even greater. His every down use is even greater. Brian Brisset, defensive tackle Clemson. I've been talking about him forever because I really think he should be in the mix at 17. Um, he is a Cam Hayward clone. And I know he didn't have a tremendous year this past year. I mean, over the past two seasons, this poor guy has battled ACL, kidney, shoulder. And I told you before, unfortunately, his 15-year-old sister passed away right before the season. He still played this year, but he looked like a man possessed, him, to be honest with you. I mean, he is a big man and he comes in and runs a 4.86. Phenomenal 10-yard split getting off the line. Outstanding in the change of direction drills. So, Assuming, well, you can't assume with him. That's unfortunate. It is 
hopefully his on all his his athletic stuff was phenomenal. Really, really good. Gives me no pause at all to take him with the Steelers first round pick. Hopefully he cleared the medicals as well, though. I mean, we just don't know that. I'm never going to get that knowledge until probably after he slides or gets picked early. So uh, he's someone I think you're going to hear more and more linked to the Steelers. And he plays in a very similar manner as Cam Hayward. Now, I don't know that this guy is going to be in the mix for the Steelers, and that's Nolan Smith. Uh, He's an edge rusher. He's 238 pounds, which is a little heavier than I thought he would be. 41 and a half inch vertical out of Georgia. I'm not sure if I mentioned that or not. Um, and he hit a 43940 and a 41 and a half inch vertical. I'm almost certain that he's the heaviest person in combine history to have over a 40 vertical under a 4440. Remarkable. And he's a really good player on tape. I mean, he's had a lot. He has some injuries this year too, but he can play off the board or off the ball. He can certainly rush the passer. Those Georgia guys don't always put up huge numbers because there's just so many of them and they have these huge leads too. They start playing the younger guys, start grooming the other dudes. He also had a great broad jump. All his 10 second splits and stuff or 10 yard splits are off the chart. High, high character, you know, team captain type of dude. So Nolan Smith may, I mean, in a way this works in the Steelers favor because I think there's a chance where I didn't before that there's a that he has been gone by 17, which of course lets somebody drop down at that point. Um, another guy that we've talked about a lot is Lucas Van Ness, another edge out of Iowa. I think he probably confirmed that he'll be off the board before 17. Good news for the Steelers. This dude's 6'5, 272 pounds, really looks the part. Very athletic build. Still like young looking in the face, like he's still going to develop. Runs a four five eight. I mean, at that weight, in a way, he kind of reminded me of Bud Dupree, but more athletic. And I thought he was kind of a straight line run through you like Bud guy, you know, Bud type. I mean, that's how he played at Iowa. But his position drills and especially his change of direction, short shuttle, things like that, you know, the L drill were really, really good. So maybe he's a better change of direction quickness guy that I initially you know thought and and that's what this is all about so I got some other risers here a couple other dudes to talk about but I'll be back in a moment All right, Zach Pickens from South Carolina looks like a Pittsburgh Steeler to me. 6'4", 291. You know, that's the the Hayward to it. You know, the, the 3'4 defensive end kind of prototype with really long arms, well over 34 inches. And he comes out and runs a sub 4'9", 40. I've liked some things I've seen from him, and this workout really makes me think, boy, he should be firmly, firmly on the Steelers' radar I'm guessing round three, but I would say somewhere on day two, he ends up going. His drills were really good, quick, really nice in the bag drills. Bends well for a bigger guy like this, too. So Zach Pickens is somebody I don't think I've talked to you guys about from South Carolina. Makes a lot of sense to me for the Steelers. I don't know if the Steelers will be in in the market for these higher end edge players, but their call from Auburn, I think, is probably... Not at 17. I don't think an edge at 17 makes a lot of sense, but I think he'll get picked right around the Steelers' 32nd pick. Maybe he's even on the board after day one and teams start calling up crazy to get this guy. 6'3", 245. I mean, he's a 3'4", outside linebacker type. He can drop into coverage. His, His drill work was really good. You know, solid vertical, really good broad jump. 10 7 broad jump. And so Derek Hall, I think, made... A, a, a lot of money in this one. Just kind of affirmed that he's right in the mix of first round edge pass rushers out of Auburn. Derek Hall, I think someone you should look for, you know, end of round one, early round two. I, I would bet my bottom dollar he's a top 40 pick. Another Steeler looking defensive lineman is Wisconsin's Keanu Benton. Another one, 6'4", 309. He might be a little 
nosy-ish than the guy we talked about, you know, a minute ago. But it, a 508.40 at 309 pounds, really, really good 10-yard split as well. It was a 1.79. That probably doesn't mean much to you, but it's really good. You're looking for that from a 309-pound man. Very powerful. Really shined at the Senior Bowl. He's a bully. I mean, I think that if he's around at 49, I think he would make a ton of sense for the Steelers. I mean, he could be kind of a somewhat of a nose, more nose than end in the 3-4, but it does, that stuff doesn't matter that much. But he could do both. Linebackers. Diane Henley from Washington State is a guy I am really, really warming up. Um, he was really fluid and abrupt, changing directions, looked good with his coverage drops, all that type of stuff. He really played well at the Senior Bowl. So Diane Huntley from Washington State, I'm almost certain, goes on day two. Um, if the Steelers are in the linebacker market, I don't think they'll take one at 17, but day two makes a ton of sense. We'll see how free agency goes. I think you guys know my thoughts on free agents to target at the linebacker position. But if it's the draft where they address what I think is the weakest position on the team, Henley makes a ton of sense, as does Jack Campbell. I've pumped this guy up for a while, too. I mean, he's 6'4 and 5'8, just under 250 pounds, a linebacker out of Iowa. Um, really good broad jump, really good 10 yard split, excellent vertical. And I thought, man, he's going to struggle with a change of direction stuff. He's a great coverage linebacker. He won the Butkus award for best linebacker in football last year in the, in college football, but he killed the change of direction stuff, you know, really good three cone, nice work on the shuttle. So those big guys have a hard time getting low, changing directions, he erased that. So Jack Campbell is on fire right now to me. I mean, I don't think he's around one player or pick 32, but the, you know, when you get to that late second or the later second, I'd certainly be interested. I don't know if he makes it that long. So another edge rusher, a Byron Young. There's two Byron Youngs in this track in this draft class, by the way. This is a Tennessee edge rusher, not the defensive lineman. Uh 6'2, 250. He's a little bit older. He's had a strange path to get to Tennessee, um, but he destroyed it. I mean, it's just explosiveness, explosiveness, explosiveness. Four four three vertical, thirty eight inch. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, thirty eight inch vertical. Four four three forty, eleven flat broad jump. His three cones were really good. Um, so th this guy had a great ten second split. Phenomenal leaps. I mean, just an explosive, explosive player. Interesting background. Maybe the fact that he's a little older than others might, you know, let him slide around further than he would have. And maybe that might work to the Steelers' advantage as a, a third edge player. So those were all good. And I'm sure I'll come up with some other good ones to talk about. But there were two guys I wanted to discuss that things didn't go well for. And I know a couple of you actually in the last article I wrote brought up Mike Morris, an, an edge rusher, an oversized edge rusher from Michigan. He's 6'5, 275. Everything I read, all the reports, this guy's going to blow you away in, in uh, testing. His testing was really bad. Uh, I mean, just under a 540, his vertical of 28.5, wow, you know, he's really, really low. Didn't do the three-tone, didn't do the shuttle. You know, he's a big dude that stands up a lot in that Michigan defense as an edge. This doesn't imply at all that he's close to being athletic enough. I mean, well below the bar on all of those deals. Maybe he's going to have to make the Aaron Smith turn into a 295-pound guy and fight with offensive tackles on the interior a little more. I don't know. Maybe it just wasn't his day. I mean, nobody thinks about the uh, the human side of this, I mean, but maybe he was ill. Maybe he just wasn't feeling right. Uh, who knows? But I am going to pay attention to Michigan's uh, pro day for sure and, and see what's the story with this guy because his stock had to fall drastically. And you feel bad for him, but... I mean, there's no denying it. So I want to talk about Andre Carter, too. Really, really unique prospect because he's at Army. And a lot of people, if you guys pay attention to mock drafts during the season, his name came up in the first round a lot. I mean, really, really good player against flat-out terrible competition. I mean, Army's not playing very good college football teams. So everybody wants this guy to be a super success. 
He's six six and a half, two fifty six. He has good length, but it was really rough. And here's why: like watching him at the Senior Bowl, it was obvious that he was just he's just not strong enough. You know, guy from Army is not strong enough. What are you talking about? And then he comes here, and all his times, all of his workouts are flat out poor. Well, folks. He doesn't get to train like everybody else. I mean, his job is to be a army soldier. It's not to get ready for the NFL combine. So even during the season, I was told that they don't get much weight weight room time, you know, on the army football team. And they don't get much time to train in a football manner like every other cadet or, you know, army soldier. He gets up at the crack of dawn, I assume, and runs with weapons and things on his back so that he can run all day and be a better soldier, not a better football player. So there's like no way for him to put good weight on, which is how the military is designed, but that doesn't correlate to football. So, and then also he doesn't get the opportunity of, oh, my bowl game's done. I'm going to go check into this specialty place to get me ready for um, <laughs> the combine and just do combine related stuff and work on my stance coming out of the, for the 40 and work on my shuttles. So he he's just is what you get, but with some army training, you know, which again, doesn't help you at all for football, really. Well, it does. I mean, it's better than sitting on the couch with me eating pizza, but I mean, it's not trained towards football at all. So the hopes for him were way, way, way too high. And, and I think people were rooting for him. He still may go on to have a good NFL career, but Andre Carter is going to be an edge rusher in the Steelers system. Um, but you would have to basically totally redshirt him um, and work on his body from the top down. You know what I mean? Just start doing football stuff with him. And he may be well worth it because his tape is good against lesser competition. And he's got measurables, you know, length and all those things. I'm sure he's tough as can be. And I'm sure he's a high quality guy and all that kind of stuff. I'm sure it'll work. But he just isn't strong enough or just hasn't trained for the NFL. And that was pretty apparent here at the combine. So that's the front seven, the highlights from it. And uh, we'll talk D-backs and everything else, I guess, on Monday. So talk to you then.